The transition for O-line coach Charlie Dickey was never about ability, but more about philosophy. Then Mike Gunny got all philosophical and said, Coach, can you turn us into a power first team? He said, not only can I, but I can give you a Remington-type guy, a Heisman-type guy, and then I can be the dude that brings in all the dudes to flip the recruiting on its head type guy. You are a Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. This is the number one daily podcast on your cowboys. As your national inside orange tour guide, I try to bring you the most up-to-date information and helpful insight. The goal here is to make this thing grow into the best Big 12 fan base account all day, every day. Make Locked On Oklahoma State part of your daily routine. Click and subscribe now. And always be up to date on the Cowboys and Cowgirls. Today, we're partially brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment matter more. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks back in bonus bets. Win or lose. Get in on the action. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get started today. Meanwhile, we're going to get started today with the news that Charlie Dickey gets to say, Hey, Coach Gundy, not only can I do this, but hold my beer, sir. We saw the emergence of the offensive line last season. Then we hear the news that all of the offensive linemen are coming back and we're going to get another power for Big 12 starting offensive linemen to come in and compete as well. That was probably evidence that Coach Dickey's doing the daggone thing. Last year, we knew what we had in Jacoby Sanders coming up and Jack and Dean coming up, two freshmen that were vying for legitimate three deep opportunities, which means, once again, Charlie Dickey kind of silently got the job done last season in recruiting as well. This season is already better. Stealing Jalen Beckley from Places like Clemson and Florida State and Georgia. Obviously, that's going to be massive. But then to double up on it and give Riker half? Ladies and gentlemen, what Charlie Dickey is building is amazing. And if my words alone aren't enough today, hopefully my fluffy face will be the dead giveaway on my excitement level. You all know I love film. Oftentimes, I get so lost in film that I do hours of notes to fit into a good chunk size 30 minute show for you to cruise to work through or crack open a beer at the end of the day and watch this slightly unorthodox, keeping it real orange shaded cowboy madness happen. This recruiting class is already absolute madness. We already have wide receiver, kick return, punt return, a cornerback, DB, be whatever you want him to be, Madrill, the future king of elusivity, Lopez, then the biggest Charlie Dickey era still of all time, which we just got to experience with Jalen Beckley. Then we virtually get into today. After getting that six foot four, 300 pound, all everything, play anywhere O-lineman, we fast forward to get another massive six foot six, 310 pound lineman by way of Owasso, Oklahoma. Riker, the bulldozer, have only preceded by Wichita, Kansas area native defensive end and your starting small forward, Kyle Kia. Book it now, write it down now, take it to the bank, and hammer the over. This will be the best class on paper since 2018, with the possibility of going higher. The 2018 class was ranked by 247 composite number 34 in the country making it one of the greatest classes in Oklahoma State history, of course. Then 2011, the class just so happened to be ranked number 25 in America, followed by the number 31st ranked class in 2012. What else happened in 2011? Is it a coincidence? I mean, I I think not. A Big 12 title trophy in hand, a massive Fiesta Bowl W over the number one overall pick, Andrew Luck in Stanford, after getting screwed out of, I'm sorry, sorry, um, outvoted from playing in the national title game magically by 0.008%. And then also magically, the BCS disintegrated right after that because, oh, uh, I guess the formula was able to be manipulated. Go figure. Not that it's insanely better now, but the playoff does fix some of it. So during 2011 and subsequently right after that, that season of the energized Mike Gundy 
capitalization, we thrived in recruiting. However, we didn't necessarily capitalize off of that massive wave of momentum nearly enough to the degree that we should have. But aha, life is all about second chances. And here we are again. The same excitement is brewing, or heck, actually, I would say the excitement might even be boiling at this point. The same look at endless possibilities to the season. The same, if not significantly more talent. The same level of eyeballs. Actually, that's going to be significantly more, too, because of the emergence of the Big 12. This season is huge. And the recruiting right now is just proof of that. Just that the door is now open for the Cowboys to take somewhat of a stranglehold on supremacy in this conference. Top three should be the bare minimum, rinse, wash, repeat every single year. Our expectations should be so high, they should be through the roof. So through the roof that they finally have to raise the roof and build the upper deck. The upper deck that Boone always envisioned. He envisioned Mike Gundy leading us to at least two, three, four Big 12 titles causing the ticket demand sales to go so high that we had to add more seats, raise the roof. We kept getting so close to that happening and then falling just a hair short. And that, that's something that we all know in cowboy country. It, it hurts our heart. But again, that's why I'm saying this season is that season of capitalization. The recruiting is, is showing that. So let's, Highlight these two new dudes because, again, they're both massive in different ways. And, no, I don't think Kyle's going to be coming to Oklahoma State at any point in time to play some basketball, although we maybe should, uh, we maybe should approach that at a little bit of a later date. Just like you and I both should approach ticket buying with a lot less stress, getting the hotels, flights, rentals, all that, it's already, it's already not fun. So don't complicate it even more. Download the Game Time app today. Make getting tickets anytime, anywhere for almost anything super simplistic. Game Time is authorized to hook you up in Major League Baseball and uh, other events as well that we've already talked about. The last minute killer deals, all in prices, the lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of you buying tickets. This last minute ticket feature is absolutely wild. The easy to find, easy to buy major league tickets for every kind of event in your area. My favorite thing is you get to view the seats before you arrive. So there's no hanky panky of getting stuck in the wrong section. Most price guaranteed event cancellation protection, job loss protection. Who does that? Game time does that. That's why you need to make it a priority. With last minute deals, you can save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, whatever. The seat views are panoramic, so you get a little extra bougie feel with it. The game time guarantee means that you'll get credited back 110% of the difference if you find the same seat and same row for cheaper. Take the guesswork out of you buying tickets today with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. But again, create that account. Redeem the code. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E, -E, Locked On College, for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. The two new dudes, obviously, we were able to talk a little bit here about Riker. Obviously, we've discussed ad nauseum about if you can control in-state recruiting, typically you're going to have a pretty good shot and expanding your profile off of that. Getting Riker, the bulldozer half from Owasso, is the definition of a proper nickname. It's also the definition of what you would call a road grader, a true, ruthlessly pursuing road grader guy. One that is about to go through the glass factory, go from the two deep. To all Big 12, to Big 12 title, then to the NFL. His words, not mine, mostly. Our presentation to him, much like our presentation to Ollie Gordon, had the perfect amount of family buy-in, fortune, and fortitude to make him being a Cowboy the best and most logical option. Staying close to home and competing for Big 12 titles is the missing ingredient for several prospective Cowboys. Columbus, Texas is pretty, pretty darn close to still ours as well, so... 
In fact, it's so close that you never have to ride a Dear John letter. All right? Dear John and Schobel family, still what America is the bee's knees for Big 12 football dreams. Orange is approximately 1,270 times better than green and mustard yellow or even purple. TCU's awesome. Don't get me wrong. I do find myself cheering for TCU and KU, like 85% of Big 12 games. But this is the NIL era. It's about developing and marketing the best product. Develop the best product. Rob Glass, thank you. Promote and market the best product. What do you do when you need to feature something in a presentation? You highlight it in orange. Now, just because Baylor has a super cute mustard and highlighter yellow infused theme doesn't mean that the highlight they provide is the right one. All right, speaking of the right one, that could be the nickname for Kyle Kia. Right? This six foot four, 205 pound defensive end wears number five like KD, Kendall Daniels. He looks like a little bit of a bigger frame, KD. He attacks like KD and he plays the flats as good as KD, but, comma, and also, he sets the edge better than a young Emmanuel Ogba. Yeah, rewind it. I said it. That Nigeria Nightmare 2.0 was a very raw product. The only thing raw about Kyle Kia is the way he plays the game or the way he sets the pace of play by dropping bombs from the top of the key on the court. Mike Gundy, the famous multi-sport assassin himself, has done it again. Now, Paul Randolph is definitely going to be licking his chops at the prospect of developing this dude. No need to even mention what Rob Glass is, is about to do with everything in his disposal. We have several more guys that have O-State solidly in their top three that are going to be hand, on hand this week. The boost in news on the defensive side of the ball should be even more wild, I would say, fairly quickly. Now, on top of uh, the ticket giveaways here on the show, guys, make sure you're also checking out the crazy deals with folks with a purpose. They have some stuff cooking up right now. NIL is definitely helping all of these young dudes expand their profiles and exposure, which in turn helps Oklahoma State fans get more access and feel more connected. Go make it tangible. Uh, hit, hit us up if you want to be even more involved as we all look to make this season magical and more meaningful than ever. What continues to provide meaningful snaps is the wealth of continuity within the locker room. The amount of snaps that the guys are getting, it's not you know something that can be replicated by game speed, obviously. But if you look at the talent that's on the field and the amount of snaps that the young guys are getting, it does make it almost inevitable that this is going to be a season that even if you're not an Oklahoma State fan, you can get behind. I mean, we mentioned a little bit yesterday from a fan perspective when you're continuing to get these dudes and you've got a couple silent commitment dudes that are going to be on hand this week that could upgrade their commitment stab status, make it a little bit more official. Numerically, we have a lot to fill here. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to squeeze out of the third sweat section just yet, but having all these guys on campus, whether they were entering as top five Oklahoma State, top 10 Oklahoma State guys, if it feels right and the fit is right and the cowboy culture is right, everything that we have going on puts us in a completely dim different hemisphere than before. The saying the unspoken. How many times did we lose a Big 12 title or a de facto opportunity at a Big 12 title to OU? The OU is gone. Do I want to play them every single year still? Absolutely. But it ain't going to happen. So what should now happen is we take hold of the top three race every year in the Big 12. That's what we're selling. That's what we're showing. And I'll tell you, the development at, at some of these, these positions is absolutely wild. I cannot wait to see what Taiwan Ray and R.J. Lester do. Because R.J. Lester is six foot three, 200-pound cornerback. Then we also have Jacoby Oliphant, who falls in that same realm that's going to be pretty wild to see his progression of development. The safety room is thick. The recruiting that we're doing right now is wild. Brian Nardo is one of the best I've ever heard of at his age. 
in living rooms for recruiting. Tim Rattay is a quarterback whisperer. There used to be a time that getting a four-star quarterback to even consider Oklahoma State was a far-fetched dream. Now we're having back-to-back-to-back four-star guys. And even though I keep pandering to Columbus, Texas, that's because I do think that Adam Schobel and John Schobel are guys that can kind of change the direction of a program. I think the same thing about Gunnar Wilson, Landon Cleveland, Jonathan. I keep saying his name wrong. It's Agumadu. But these guys have allowed some of this transitionary period in the DFW area. The capitalization is huge. I also think we should expand a little bit. You know, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but the 2027 class has some gems. Caleb, C6, White, Legacy. Caleb Cruz is an athlete out of Permian that it's good to get in on early. There's already a couple Big 12 schools in on them. There's an SEC school in on them early as well. That's because it makes sense. Reggie McNeil. I think there's still a misconception that he's a quarterback and he wants to continue to play quarterback. He's an athlete. I see him as a DB first, but he can high point it with the best of them. He can go up and get the ball and play wide receiver at this level as well. I just don't want to miss out on playing against him in the Big 12. I darn sure don't want to see him going to Texas A&M. No, nothing on his dad. You got to know Reggie McNeil Sr. was probably the funnest Aggie to ever watch other than Johnny football. And luckily, Reggie McNeil is a a very high character value individual, so you don't have to worry about all the the craziness. But yeah, you're having some some dudes get underlooked. You're having some dudes that are going to be on campus right now that understand the expectations at Oklahoma State, and they understand the lay of the land with the new Big 12. It's continuing to get better. Again, some of the people that used to want to go to Oregon State or Washington State, might be leaning more now towards an Oklahoma State. I think Arizona's going to be good. We know Utah's going to be good. BYU is going to have times where they're good. K-State's always going to be a problem. Iowa State's going to pop up here and there. TCU is always going to be a major roadblock for everybody. Houston's not going to be down for long. I don't even necessarily that say that you can say they'll be down a whole lot this upcoming season. But the Big 12 is going to get more wild and more difficult. That's why this juncture of time is huge. It's huge for us, Utah, K-State, everybody. Everybody at the top of the Big 12 that has eyes on continuing to be a heavy favorite to win this conference year after year after year, they all understand what this season means. And out of all the teams that we've talked about, the team with the most depth, the most returning starters, the most leadership is Oklahoma State. The only thing that we have a massive area of concern in is realistically not even indicative of a particular position battle. It's indicative of a lot of talent. Sometimes having too much talent can make it difficult on the coaches, but that's the spot I think we're in. So it doesn't make it difficult on us fans because it's easy to get behind a bunch of dudes that are showing up showing out every single day. Just like you should show up and show out when FanDuel gives you opportunities, right? You're here to capitalize too. It's playoff time in the NBA and hockey. The NHL is a blast to watch and baseball's in full swing. FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks back in bonus bets guaranteed. Win or lose, that's 150 bones back in your wallet or your pocket, no matter what happens. So join today. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs, slam dunks, because it's all on a safe, secure, and super easy-to-use app. Why are you waiting? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today. Make your next bet your best bet, and it just so happens to be an automatic win. Get this W right now. Download FanDuel because it is America's number one sports book. Get on it. All right. 
So Mike Gundy was asked in the interview the other day, is there a position of major concern when it comes to death? And you could see him digging in his brain because he really legitimately wanted to give an answer. But as he thought about it and the wheels turned, you could see him kind of going through each position and realizing that, no, not this year. I mean, maybe long snapper, even though shy is legit, but without Zeke, eh, maybe, maybe you don't have quite the depth at that position. But no, the biggest issue in area of concern right now in Stillwater is just about numbers, right? It's about scholarship numbers, PWO numbers, walk-on numbers, and keeping everything at the right threshold where opportunities and NIL value don't get completely out of whack. Because even your third team, fourth team, scout team guys – they need to be part of the NIL packaging as well. Again, if Oklahoma State or whomever is going to take a stranglehold, I think the secret recipe is building the best PWO program. If you build the absolute best PWO program, then your first team, second team, they're always going to be ahead of everybody else because they're getting ready to a level that nobody else can provide. And as we continue to look down that, that uh, barrel, NIL's huge because when you do have a lot of guys that want to come back to Oklahoma State, whether it be this year, next year, or the year after, there's always going to be times where you have a bunch of fifth-year, six-year style of guys. Now, it won't ha happen quite as much as currently because we had the COVID year stuff too. But nonetheless, you're going to have these opportunities at times where the senior leadership is so abundantly beneficial that it can help get more snaps, but it can also help in recruiting. This is why this class should be better than 34, 31st in the country. It's already building that way. Tell me this doesn't look just like 2011. It's 2011 with bigger dudes, more size, more speed, more depth, more snaps, more continuity. In 2011, Oklahoma State was a jump-off school for coaches. It was. We can call a spade a spade. Coaches, and if NIL would have existed back then, a decent amount of players likely would have used Oklahoma State to catapult themselves to another position. This is the perception that we're killing, and we're killing it this season. We had to tell a, a couple potential early enrollees to hold off a minute while we, you know, finagled some of the, the numbers and made it all make sense for everybody. So everybody was happy and there was no scholarship limitations or any of that. So the management of the roster and the recruiting and the transfer portal uh, is amazing. Well, we've talked about Benny Tonga being an ace. Tad, Todd Bradford, I mean, you deserve a tip of the cap as well, sir. He's the one that's kind of keeping the recruiting and the film and the transfers and numerical stuff all in order. And he's been with Oklahoma State and Mike Gunny for a long time. Again, that continuity is starting to help more and more and more in the recruiting game. Because you don't want to transfer from one school to another school to another school to another school. I mean, if, if that's what you want, that's a, not a recipe for success typically. But if you want some assurances as a parent, as a, a scouting executive or recruiting coordinator, you want your players to go in a position where they know there's not going to be a lot of turmoil and change. Going through new DCs or, or offensive coordinators over and over and over, or different position groups, that's not good. It's not good to keep a roster together. That's also not good for building enough of that camaraderie that it's so infectious that when players step on campus, they fall in love. Whether it be a basketball game or a baseball game, heck, guys, Kyle, Kyle was just at uh, the Bedlam baseball game where we had almost 80 or over 8,200 fans in attendance with some of the other football players, a couple, couple of the defensive coaches, a couple, couple times he was caught having way too much fun. He already felt like the family atmosphere was something he wasn't going to find anywhere else because he hadn't heard of it being anywhere else like this to this degree. He's a basketball guy. 
that fell in love at a baseball game because of Oklahoma State, the university. Just like you're hearing every day from the players and Mike Gundy that we have to go take the Big 12 title this season. We've been somewhat complacent, and this year we're not going to do that. We're just going to go seize the moment, carpe diem, and take the title. You're hearing from commits that what is happening within the Cowboy culture, they can't find anywhere else. You're hearing it over and over and over again. So either this is legitimately how these dudes feel deep down in their souls, or they just so happen to be saying the same lines from different parts of the country and taking visits at different times, taking visits with, with different dudes on the roster to lead the way. This is different. The feeling is different. The biggest area of concern is not at a position. It's at just making sure that we continue to maintain the numbers to give the best of both worlds between opportunities and playing time and financial capabilities to continue to try for more opportunities here at Oklahoma State in Stillwater, America. Will we lose a, a couple people? Yes, that's an inevitability. But if you're not talking 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 people like a lot of schools, then you're not only in good shape for this season, but you're in good shape for the future. The future is now. It's already started. We just have to go prove it. This is the season of prove it. All right, y'all. I think we've proven a lot. We've got a long way to go. As always, you know I love you. God bless you. Go Pokes. Thank you for tuning in to make this your first listen here in Locked On Oklahoma State. You could be anywhere. So happy you choose to be here. Hit the like button. Dislike it if you dislike it. It's okay, too. Most importantly, share, comment, subscribe. A podcast of folks, you're the bricks, the foundation, the bread, the butter. Go do what you do. Leave the reviews. Hit the stars. Later, my taters.